Good morning. Welcome to Raw and Prophetic with your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Raw and Prophetic is where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. On this podcast, you will be encouraged through the Word of God to step in your purpose-driven assignment from the Lord and to be inspired and encouraged to be all that God has called you to be. So, welcome to our podcast. Here is your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Well, good morning, good morning, welcome to Raw and Prophetic. Happy 4th of July. I pray that your weekend was blessed and filled with love, peace, joy, um, all those sorts of things. Um, of course, you know, the 4th of July is uh, has fallen on a Monday. And um, I know many of, of you have pretty much celebrated the 4th on yesterday or probably Saturday or Friday with your family and friends because most of us are going to be uh, just resting up today, maybe popping a few fireworks to get ready for um, work on tomorrow. So blessings and peace to you. I just pray that your day is being uh, filled with love and, and being filled with liberation as we celebrate our country's liberation and birth. And so um, I want to continue on our series talking about um, the kingdom of God, um, the kingdom in mission. <clears throat> and so today I have been in prayer and um, I just want to share. Um, I just want to be in prayer and seeking God. And I am noticing that the spirit of the Lord revealed unto me that we are definitely living in a time where many are falling away from the truth, many that do not really understand the true principle of the kingdom of God and what it consists of. The kingdom of God is not a church as far as going to church on Sunday, you know, dancing, singing, listening to the pastor, and then you go back the rest of the week living like the world or living like, you know, everybody else in the world. We are called to be separated and set apart. And so uh, many people are deceived because they feel like if I just give God his props or if I just say, you know, or acknowledge him, you know, say, well, you know, Jesus is real. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus, you know, having that form of godliness. And I want to talk about that today. I want to discuss what it is to have a form of godliness and why the, the scriptures uh, talks about it. If you if you are a Bible reader, you will know that all scripture is in the Bible more than once. OK, every scripture is in the Bible more than once if you read and study the word. And so here in Second Timothy three and five, it says having a form of godliness, but denying his power and form from people, uh, such people turn away. It tells us in the scripture to not have anything to do with those who have a form of godliness. Amen. And, um, but denying its power. And what does it mean by denying its power? Having a form, okay, of godliness. That means that they're, they're putting on a, a front of religion, a front of I am saved, but they're denying the power. Okay. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not just in word, but in power. Okay. The kingdom of God is not just in word, but it's in power. And let me find that scripture for you. So you'll go back and write that in your notes. Okay. So we will find this in first Corinthians four and 20. It says for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. All right. So. You got 2 Timothy 3 and 5 saying, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Okay. So let us go to 1 Corinthians 4 and 20. Let's go to that. Let's go to that because I want to read that to, to, to so you can get an understanding 
what are we talking about in reference to power? What are we talking about in reference to power? Because we've got to understand that we got to we we got to get an understanding. You know, when we when we read the Bible, we must get an understanding of what the scripture is telling us so that we don't be uh deceived. We don't be um uh deceived into falling into the things of the world. And I think the greatest thing, the greatest deception is what well, the greatest thing that people fall into is deception. They fall into deception because they feel like, oh well I you know I got them. Okay, so right here in first Corinthians four, um I'm going to read verse 18. It says, some are puffed up as they thought they were coming to you, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord's will and know, and I will know not the words of those who are puffed up, but the power. So most people who uh, claim to have uh, Jesus or claim to have God are false imposters, clouds without water. That's spoken up in the book of Jude. They are clouds without water. They have no power um, in their life. The power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit is not evident. Okay. The kingdom of God is evident. And those that carry the kingdom of the Lord, Jesus, carries the spirit of Christ, which is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, and, and let me tell you something, many of us, try to deny let me tell you what that blasphemy is because the bible speaks about blasphemy being an unforgiven sin it's when you deny the power of the holy spirit and that's why it's going to be so many people on the day when jesus returns because we act as if there's no judgment day coming many people who are preaching the gospel is preaching gospel to your flesh they're telling you to be successful they're telling you to chase wealth they're telling you to chase all of these things instead of you getting in prayer and getting before the Lord to um, seek out your purpose, your finances, everything that attains to your life every day. And so if you're spending 24 hours a day trying to chase success and wealth, you're not going to read the Bible. You're not going to have time to read scripture. You're not going to have time to pray. You're not going to have time to get in the presence of God. The Bible tells us that the Lord says he's never seen the righteous forsaken nor begging bread. But these, these people who call themselves leaders in the kingdom of God, who are false imposters, will do everything to try to make you enforce in your own, own strength the move of God. And many people are um, actually fathoming up a movement of God and they're doing it in their own strength. God is nowhere in some of the things that these people are saying and doing. And that's why it's important for you to be a Bible reader. Many people don't read their Bible. It takes time to get into scripture. It takes time to read. Just be like, like right now, before I came on this morning, I had to go and read scripture, kind of seek and search out scriptures to be able to back up what I'm saying to you even now. It took me about an hour to do this, an hour. And a lot of people don't have an hour, two hours, three hours, however long it takes to research the word of God, pray, seek the Lord, read the word, get an understanding to bring you truth and to bring you under, to bring you truth so that you can go back and read this for yourselves and get an understanding. I'm going to read another scripture. Isaiah 29 13 says, therefore the Lord says, and as much as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts from me, and the fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. So this is why I just spoke to you. Many people are being taught by the commandments of men, the traditions of men, and not being taught by the spirit of God. Amen. The spirit of the Lord. 
You know, Isaiah talked about it in Isaiah 60, the spirit, Jesus, listen, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Even in the book of Luke, before Jesus got up to minister to the people, he quoted Isaiah 60 and talked about what the spirit of the Lord would do. So this is the thing. Let's, let's, let's go to Isaiah 60. Cause we're going, see, this is how you might be thinking, well, we're going all over the place. That's how you read the word of God. The Bible will have you go from Isaiah to Matthew, to Matthew, to Zephaniah, from Zephaniah to, to, to Amos, from Amos to Genesis, because the Lord wants you to seek him out. And to seek God, it takes time. And we live in a fast paced world. This is why we have internet. This is why we have Facebook. You know, it, you know, back a long time ago, when you would take a picture, you had to wait days before you would see the picture. Then they developed a camera that was instant. I remember when I was a kid, we used to have that little instant camera. You take your picture and it instantly prints your photos out. Well, in today's time, you don't have to even wait a, barely a second to take a picture of yourself and you got it right there. And not only that, you can take a picture of yourself or anything that you want to take a picture of and post it within minutes, seconds. You can post a video within seconds. So we live in a time where the enemy has created um, a world where people don't want to be patient. And people don't want to wait. And so this is why so many people get on social media. They get on all these different type of platforms. And they're preaching about how God is going to destroy your enemies. God is going to make your enemies sit at your feet. And God's going to do this. And God's going to bless you. And you're blessed and highly favored. And your day is coming. And you know, <coughs> you're going to go from the pit to the palace. All of this stuff. But they're not telling you how to change and allow the power of God, the power. See, it takes power through the spirit to not fall into the temptations and the lust of this world. First John talks about it. He says, do not love the world or the things of this world. And what does the church do? We do exactly what the word tells us not to do. Too many of us are in love with this world. Too many of us are not only in love with the world, but the things that are in it. And this is why we don't see the true unadulterated power of God moving in the earth. The power of God is not just praying and prophesying. It's not just casting out devils and, and things like that, like that. The power of God is when there's true transformation taking place in a person's life. Even when we prophesy to people, even when we lay hands on them and we pray for them and they fall out, fall slain in the spirit. That's not the true, true power. That's part of it. But the true power is when they get up off the floor is their conversion. Is their conversion. Are they going back to that same sin that they, that they, that they've been delivered from? Deliverance means to be delivered from something that has taken a stronghold over your life. And many of us, we're still dealing with strongholds of depression. We're dealing with strongholds of anger. Strongholds of resentment, unforgiveness. And we act as if by us showing our outward appearance. See, for, having a form of God in this is showing outwardly what I am. You can put on a t-shirt and say how blessed you are. You can walk around, you know, and, and take pictures of your selfies at your church, your selfies at any events that your church is having. That does not mean that you authentically belong in the kingdom of God. What authenticates you is change and transformation, conversion. If you are not the same person that you were two years ago, three years ago, a week ago, last weekend. Come on now. Change can come and, and, and you, can, you can change in the weekend. Maybe you were smoking. For example, I was listening to another minister and he was talking about how the power of words 
um, basically, basically, uh, exemplifies our, our destiny. So you are what you speak. And the Bible says, so a man thinking of himself, so is he. So most people, the way they act, they act out basically by what they're thinking or what they think of themselves. And if they think less of themselves, they're going to act out that way. That's why it's important for you to read the word, to get in the scriptures so that you can read the word to get an understanding that I can change, that I can be delivered from my childhood hurt. I can be delivered from last year's hurt or betrayal. Maybe you maybe you came from a home that was that wasn't perfect. Every home is, is, is imperfect in some sort of way. Sometimes your parents can only raise you with the knowledge that they have. And if you if you were molested, if you were abused in some type of way, if you was um, abandoned, whatever it is, the word of God, the spirit of God, Jesus Christ. Is the spirit of adoption. He loves you and he will come into your life and bring transformation. And even though you might have been an abandoned child, even though you might have been a, a child that was abused. What was meant for evil will be turned into good if you allow the word of God to come in and to cleanse you and to give you peace and joy. Romans 14 and 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So I just sat there and said that. If you have the Holy Spirit, you will find your peace. Oh, you will find true peace in the Spirit of God. But you won't find it if you're having a form of godliness that's what the bible says turn away because those type of people still want to fight in the flesh instead of fighting in the spirit let me give you a perfect example you might be a christian and someone came up against you maybe someone called you at your name maybe somebody's doing things to you it takes power in the spirit to not retaliate why would you have to retaliate when you have identity in Christ. You know what the word says. You know what the word says. See when people bother me. And people do things to me. Like I had to explain to some of my family members. A certain family member tried me. And I had to let them know. I'm not scared of that individual. Because I understand who I am. By them attacking me. They only bring a damnation on themselves. Because one thing about God. He said touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. I understand what the words say. So anybody who mess with me, mess with God. Even my husband make the statement, you mess with my wife, you mess with me. <laughs> well, it, well, it's two people I got backing me up. Not just my husband, but also the Lord Jesus Christ. God is backing me. I don't have to stand up for myself because I know my battles. It's not mine. It's the Lord's. And most of the time, people mess with you because they're jealous because you carry a spirit of peace. You carry the spirit of joy. You carry the spirit of meekness and kindness. You carry the spirit of temperance. You carry the fruit and they ain't got it. And most people who don't have fruit want to disrupt yours. So that's the reason why it's important to know who you are and have the word. Stop having this form of godliness and denying the true power of God. The true power of God is when you can be at peace with all men. Even though they're trying to raise war with you. Oh, they're going to always try to raise war with the saints. That's the devil's job. But if you got the Lord on your side, the Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Who? They ain't got no power. And if they don't stop. They end will be death. You have everlasting life. So why would you be a, a inferior of something that is dried up? Amen. A cloud without water. Why would you be inferior of something like that? Because as you know, 
take pity on people like that. When I look at folks that act that way, I feel sorry for them. I said, Lord, I pray they change. I pray that you show them who, who I am, who you are, and that they will change. Amen. And so we got to understand that because there's so many people that are forming this. Now, listen, I'm going to read Ezekiel. Ezekiel 33, 31 through 32. It says, so they came, so they come to you at, at let me start over. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people and they hear your words, but they do not do them. For with their mouth, they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own gain. Indeed, you are to them as a, as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not do them. Now, the scripture tells us also to not just to be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. James 1 and 22 tells us to be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself okay it says for anyone who is a hearer of the word and not a doer is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror for he observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was mm -hmm. but and, 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 it, and it also says in james 1 verse 25 but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continue in it is not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. So let me tell you something. Y'all following a lot of folks who put on this form of godliness. They not blessed. And when people tell me they blessed, I let them say it. Let them think they blessed. I don't say nothing to them because one, one, one thing about it. A lot of people is prideful and honorary, and you can't tell them anything. But one thing about it, you ain't going to deceive me. When I see people having a form of godliness, I don't get on Facebook and call them out. I don't get on social media and call out folks that I can see by the discerning of the spirit who they really are. I pray for them. But the one thing I will not do is allow them to trap me up. Because that's what they do. Most people that have a form of godliness are entrapments for the true people of God. They will go, they'll do everything in their power to make you look like you ain't got no power to make you look like you're, inad you're inadequate to make you look like you're not a child of God because they, they, deep down inside the enemy has informed them who you really are. And because they are subject to the voice of the enemy, they're going to do every little thing in their power to make it look as if God is more with them than you. Those that truly carry the kingdom of God, walk in the kingdom of God, do the things of the kingdom of God, do not have to brag and boast in who they are. It is evident on its own. A person who truly carries an anointed can walk into a room and shift it and never open their mouth because the presence of God is on their life. But those that have to speak loud, those that have to blow the trumpets are the ones that are walking in the form of godliness, but denying his power. What power are they denying? Conversion and change. So you can sit here and tell me that the power of God can make you rich the power of God can kill all your enemies. The power of God can cause you to become famous. But the power of God can't change your wickedness, your, your heart, the unforgiveness you're carrying, the rejection you're walking in. The power of God can't stop you from smoking. The power of God can't stop the lust that you carry in your heart. The unforgiveness that you're walking in. But the power of God can do everything else but that. And this is why the Bible says they have a form. 
with their lips. They're speaking of great things that God is doing in their lives. Great things that God is doing outwardly. Really look at what they're telling you. If they're telling you God is doing great things and it's things they're showing you as far as what they got, what they drive, how God is moving. Watch those type of folk. Because the true power of God is a person that walks selfless. The more less you try to present yourself, the more power God can be present in your life. Remember, everything that we do as far as the kingdom is not of our own anyway. It is God's kingdom. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And he is the one that moves through us through the spirit of of the Holy Ghost. And a lot of people want to take accreditation. Oh, the power of God is on my life. Well, if the power of God is on your life, we'll see a humble person who walks in humility, not false humility, but true humility. Humble people don't boast and brag. It's wicked to, bo- to boast and brag. Nothing wrong with being um, excited about what God is doing in your life. There's nothing wrong with you want to show and tell people the good things, but don't mistake in that with boasting and bragging because Paul said that he boasts in the Lord. He don't boast in what God does even through him. We shouldn't even boast in what God does through us. If you go and you raise somebody from the dead, everybody in the whole world don't have to know that. Let that person that you raised from the day that God used you, the Holy Spirit, let that person go and tell the people the goodness of God and how he worked evidently in your life. And that's how we can expand this kingdom. Okay. So I read to you several scriptures. Go back and study those scriptures. Go back and read them and meditate. Because the Spirit of God really um, let me know that many of us do not read our Bibles. We don't read our Bibles. We say we read our Bibles, but we don't read our Bibles. And it's important to be a Bible reader. That's the only way you're going to grow. That's the only way you're going to mature. The Word of God is given to us as a instruction, as a book to help and teach us. And then God's spirit will begin to move in our life through the word. The word becomes alive in you. The word becomes alive. Everything that Jesus spoke concerning the end times, we see it happening today. We see it happening today. But, but, We don't want to believe it because many of us are still stuck on the things of this world versus the things of the spirit. And if you walk by the spirit, you'll see that the times are different. Yes, we want to see revival. We want to see people delivered, souls being saved. But at the same time, there's a lot of souls that are falling away. Listen, y'all. I was watching a movie the other day. I don't want to call out the name. But this particular movie, they were talking about God, but accepting homosexuality at the same time. And this is the kind of stuff that we have to stand against. You know, and and, 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 and like me and my husband, we you know, we know that, that, that last month was Pride Month. And so we saw the rainbow shirts. And one of the shirts said, love is love. And my husband said, that is not true. And I said, no, love is truth. Love is truth. Amen. If you love somebody, you're going to tell them the truth. And that's, 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 that's what it is. You're going to tell them the truth. Sometimes the truth hurts. I recognize that. 
but the truth will make you free. It'll make you free because when you are confronted with truth, you'll change. Praise God. So thank you again for listening to Ron Prophetic. I'm going to close out with a prayer. And I pray that you get this message. We're going to continue on our studies. We're going to continue on talking about having a form of godliness because I'm going to get a little bit more deeper into this on my next episode on tomorrow. So stay tuned. Um, but I pray that many of you were here. I pray that many of you were here. Uh, because even in the Bible, when uh, Jesus was speaking to the seven churches, he said, he that has an ear, let him hear. Folks ain't listening. And I pray that you hear. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence and glory. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a truth. Father God, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. God, if we're not walking truly with you, please reveal unto us those shortcomings and the areas in our life that we need cleansed by your blood so that we be, so that we can become more righteous in your sight. Your Bible says that we can't extend to the holy hill unless we have clean hands and a pure heart. And I pray, Father God, that many of us that has an ear will hear and that we will not walk in a form of godliness, but we will walk in the power of your spirit. For your word says, not by might and not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. And we are able to walk in the power first by spirit because you let us know, Jesus, that is not by power. It is not by the mighty things that men does, but it's only by the spirit of the Lord that we are able to exemplify your kingdom by the power of your spirit. You said that you gave us power from on high. Due to this power that we are able to stand against the wiles of the devil, that we put on the full armor of God. And that we will walk according to thy ways. God, in this day and time, is difficult. Because everything is accepted. Everything. And especially those of us who have dealt with being rejected. It is so hard for us to stand on the word totally. Because we are in fear that people will reject us. But Lord, you are the chief cornerstone. You are rejected by men but accepted by God. And we pray that many will have that same mindset that we may be rejected by men, but we are accepted by God because there is coming a kingdom that is not built by human hands, but built by the spirit of the living God. And we pray, Father God, that we'll continue on building up your kingdom. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in Jesus' name. Thank you again for listening to Ron Prophetic. I am your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Um, if you are in need of prayer, please reach out to me on my Facebook page, Raw and Prophetic. And I pray that you continue on being blessed on this beautiful day. This beautiful 4th of July day, Monday morning. And remember, always be blessed and be made whole. God bless you.